John, to analyze the evolutionary development of what we call cognition, which of course applies in, in, uh, throughout the animal kingdom, but as it develops in humans, and then emotion and in particular consciousness, which has a, its whole rich philosophy of mind area. Um, what can your approach to evolution, which deals with uh, pluralistic uh, metaphysics, it mm -hmm. deals with a process ontology, uh, what can it bring to understanding the evolutionary development of these uh, mental activities? Um, I think this is a difficult question, and, and I'm not sure that I can give you a very satisfying answer, um, because I am generally rather skeptical about uh, the stories we have mm -hmm. about the evolution of cognition. I think partly it's because perhaps we don't really know how to break it down into manageable parts, or even if there are manageable parts we could break it down into. Um, I, I think that there might be, there, there are certain areas, for example, the evolution of language might be something that we could mm -hmm. make process with, progress with, um, and that would be very helpful. Um, but there are so many aspects to human cognition, and human cognition is so deeply intertwined with the environment that we have created, and which is both the subject of and part of the um, means of our cognition, that I think it's, it's very hard to know what kind of um, story to tell. I think it would be, you know, it would be, perhaps the first thing would be to get a better description. If we, if we had a sufficiently good description of the process of human evolution across the range of cognitive, affective, emotional, so on, um, dimensions, we could perhaps be in a better position to have plausible stories about why this happened. But I don't think we really have a very clear um, story even of the, the it, facts of the is history. Is that why you, you've been a critic of evolutionary psychology as it uh, traditionally has been developed? Um, by, I mean, largely, yes. I mean, I think the problem with evolutionary psychology is it, say, almost grossly simplistic account of human evolution. So uh, it, it tends to, given, given it doesn't, they don't, it's not always explicit, but given the assumption of the application of traditional standard um, genetic-based models to, um, to, to human behavior, it's committed to some way in which um, the the genes essentially determine behavior, and I'm 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 hedging this a lot because evolutionary psychologists will always say, no, it doesn't determine behavior. They don't determine behavior. They determine dispositions to behavior. Say, mm -hmm. but you know, determining dispositions to behavior is determining behavior given mm -hmm. certain triggering mm -hmm. conditions. So yes, of course, nobody thinks it says we behave like kind of rather stupid robots mm -hmm. going around just emitting behaviors mm -hmm. um, in, in a rather way. But, but, you know, either it's vacuous or it is saying something. If it's saying that we can understand behavior better by looking at genetics uh, and the evolution of genetics, then I think it's grossly simplistic mm -hmm. because I think that human behavior, human development, human evolution are all multifactorial processes. But they can build that into an evolutionary psychology. They don't necessarily uh, found it entirely on a, uh, on a gene theory. Okay, so yeah, I mean, so, but, but, but the, the, the genes theory is more explicitly in evolutionary psychology, and perhaps I should be a bit more, but I mean, they think you can, there are mental modules that mm -hmm. um, produce behavior in certain kinds of situations. So we have a module for social exchange situations. We have a module for um, gender-specific behavior uh, or reproduction-related behavior. Um, and you now this seems possible, um, but nobody has demonstrated this. The reasons for thinking this, if there are any, are that it would be a good idea. 
um, evolutionarily, or so they claim. Uh, now, that seems to me to be um, a very bad form of argument. Now, they will say they do empirical experiments, and some of them are, frankly, kind of rather appalling. I mean, there's a huge tradition of drawing um, outlines, kind of um, single line outlines of female figures and asking generally American college students which they find most attractive. I don't know if one needs, I need to go into any detail why this really isn't a very good way of finding out the basic structure of the human mind. Mm. But um, uh, I mean, and, and, and the trouble is, even if this came out in the, you know, even if where the results come out more or less statistically in accord with the predictions of evolutionary psychologists, this is um, absolutely no reason to believe that rather than a whole host of other more complex um, hypotheses that um, involve, you know, um, many cultural forces, social forces, normative um, influences uh, that this doesn't account for. So if it's just somehow trying to get some evidence that there are these modules that they talk about, well, I really don't find it. I mean, the evidence is for behavior that, you know, in a sense was the, was the basis for coming up with these, these stories. Um, well, the complexity that you have uh, built into evolutionary theory with uh, pluralistic metaphysics mm -hmm. as well as process ontology, um, that gives its own kind of way to look at the, the evolutionary development of cognition or emotion because it, it just adds a lot more complexity to yes. it. Yes. It's I, the same I, principle. Absolutely. So I'm not denying, look, I mean, there's, there's, so there's one interpretation of evolutionary psychology. We have a psychology, we evolve, so evolutionary psychology is true, I buy it. But of course, what we are generally talking about is sometimes there was a long tradition for a while of referring to the Santa Barbara School of Evolutionary Psychology associated with uh, Leda Cosmides and John Tubi and, uh, and capitalizing it. So it's evolutionary, capital E, capital P yeah. psychology. Um, and of course, that's what you know, we are talking about a specific particular program of research and speculation. Um, now, I, of course, I do think that my views of evolution apply to small e, small p mm -hmm. evolutionary, which just says we evolved, we evolved a psychology somehow. But so I guess my main point is rather that the we are a long way from having the the degree of knowledge even of what happened and when and in what order and uh, to, to be in a position to offer um, very interesting or useful stories about this evolutionary um, trajectory.